How many Minecraft servers can you run on a decade old ThinkPad? With its underpowered mobile processor, this has got to be one of the worst options for a VM host. Any era equivalent desktop would do a much better job. But I don't want to use just one of these things. I want to find out if I can cluster together three of these almost useless old ThinkPads and build some kind of mini ThinkPad super cluster. I have never used Proxmox before. I have no idea how it works, but I'm gonna see if I can install it on these things and maybe we'll just make something cool. Step one was to get a bootable Proxmox installer. Then I could try and boot it up on one of the laptops, which is when I realized I never put drives in any of them and I'm not about to spend any money on SSDs for this setup. So I found some old mechanical hard drives slow and inefficient. Then I got the installer running and it went pretty smoothly, although it asked me for a host name, which I had no idea what I'm supposed to put in there. I just kind of made something up and it took it, so I guess that's fine. After I got the first one going, I ran the installer on the other two and have you ever seen a more beautiful site? Proxmox installed on three old ThinkPads ready to run some server software. I have to figure out how to configure it. I did do a little bit of research on this. The first thing I need to do is fix this no subscription issue. Proxmox is technically paid software, but they do not care if you're doing experimental testing stuff like this. They just won't give you the enterprise channel security updates, which are supposed to be more stable. That doesn't matter for this setup. You just have to go into the settings here and find the packages, which I definitely know where those are. Yeah, enterprise repository is enabled, but there's no active subscription. So we'll just go down to the repository, disable that one. Now I can go to add a repository and we'll add the community one, which you do not have to pay for. So it's just this one that says no subscription. I click add, you get updates again. Uh, it just says no subscription repository is not recommended for production use. I wouldn't exactly call this a production environment, so I think we're good. Now I'm at the part where I know less of what I'm doing. I need to actually get these communicating with each other and clustered together. I found a button that says create a cluster. I'm gonna call it think cluster. Very nice. Was that successful? It just says task okay. I think that was successful. Now I think I go to the other ones. This is node two. And I go to clusters, join a cluster. Paste information, yes, no, no ticket. What does no ticket mean? We're gonna go hit this with a refresh. Login succeeded. Okay, data center now has node one, node two, and node three, all on the same page. And if I look at the resources here, 12 CPUs, 11 gigs of RAM, and two terabytes of storage. So all of the resources are now pooled together. Now I have to figure out how to actually run stuff on this thing. I started by trying to install a Windows 10 virtual machine. This was when I realized that four gigabytes of RAM per node was really not going to cut it. This was also when I discovered that these old ThinkPad X201s hate all of my RAM apparently. I don't know what's wrong with these things. I could only get six gigabytes working in this one. This one, I tried so many RAM configurations more than four gigabytes, this thing just boot loops and boot loops or crashes and it's, it's, it's just a nightmare really. I did get eight gigabytes running in the T420, so maybe that one will be more capable. Either way, I got some virtual machines running, which brought me to my next problem. I want to stack these things together into a nice, neat, compact package. They go to sleep when you close the lids. I don't know why Proxmox being server software even knows what to do with a lid switch or why server software even has a sleep mode. I don't know. Anyway, it's a problem and I need to figure out how to make it stop doing that. Well, I found a Reddit post and it says I need to change this file to say handle lid switch equals ignore. And now I can try and close these and see if they don't turn off. That seems promising. Sleep mode didn't activate. Are they still running? And yeah, looks like they're all still running, so I can clean this setup up a bit. Well, if you ignore everything that's going on with the cables, that looks a lot better. Uh, the T420 didn't get to be in the stand because I, I kind of forgot about it, but yeah, they're vertical now. Does this setup make me look like a crazy person yet? Credit to the T420 for being totally stable this whole time. These X201s, 
They are causing so many problems. They're doing thermal shutdowns now. I don't know what's going on. I just want to do cool Proxmox stuff and nothing is working. You really know what's going well when half of the Proxmox task list is all errors. <laughs> oh, it just keeps getting better. This cursed abomination is finally working. Three Minecraft servers running at the same time. Yes, I'm aware this is a terrible way to host Minecraft servers. That's besides the point. Nothing has crashed for 41 minutes. Well, not, not the main servers at least. Let's play some Minecraft. Just to recap, what is even going on here? The three server cluster nodes here are each running one Minecraft server. Now, obviously there's nothing special about that. I could have just run a Minecraft server on each computer. That's not why this is cool. The cool part's coming where we can dynamically change where our resources are being spent. The important thing right now is I have three virtual machines all running Minecraft servers to test with. This is going to be the first server. And if I log in here, Wow, th this computer's not really powerful enough for this, but I am running Minecraft and I'm on the server. I respawned on here. Oh, there I am. There, two people. This is an actual Minecraft server. And now I can log out of this one, log into the second server. This is the second Minecraft server, also fully functional, running on one of these cluster nodes. Now here we're getting to the part that actually makes this cool. Each of the three servers is only running on one node each. So essentially they could have just been dedicated computers for each server. Now we can dynamically adjust where our software is running. Right now I'm playing on a server that's running on node two, which is this X201 over here. I will now physically remove this computer. It's not part of the cluster anymore, and we'll still be able to play Minecraft on the same server. I'll head back into the Proxmox interface and shut down the Minecraft server. Close that out. Server, you're gone. Shut down Windows. Okay, the Windows installation on this node completely shut down. I'm gonna move it to the T420. I'll just select the virtual machine, click Migrate. We're gonna move this to node three. That should be the T420. Migrate. And now we wait a few minutes. Oh wait, I forgot Proxmox is cool. That took seven seconds. Seven seconds to move the virtual machine from this node to this node. Now I'm going to completely shut down node two and remove it from the cluster. Node two, you're gone bud, shut down. This is the cool part. This is the computer that was running the Minecraft server I was just playing on. No longer part of the cluster. I've migrated the entire Windows virtual machine to this other node, and now I'm booting up that same Windows installation, and we're gonna jump on the exact same server on completely different hardware, and it only took seven seconds to swap it over. And keep in mind, while this node is doing this, it's still running the Minecraft server that was already running on it. So now this T420 is running Proxmox, two installations of Windows, each with a Minecraft server. I loaded up Minecraft again, connecting the server. We are online and I'm on my dirt pillar. When I built this dirt pillar, the server was running on this computer. This is so cool. It's crazy that Proxmox was able to migrate the virtual machine in seven seconds because everything's stored on a different server. There's actually, I wanna know how many computers are involved in this at this point. But yeah, the storage doesn't have to move. It just needs to move the actual process of running the operating system. And it can do that in seven seconds, which means that this Minecraft server is now running on the T420 along with the one it was already running. I can go back out, go to 191. This server is also running on this thing now. Now let's say that my data center here is shifting its priorities a bit. Minecraft is not all important anymore and we need to run some other software. Well, I put the other node back in, so all three are running right now, and let's just dump all the Minecraft servers onto the T420 and spin up some new VMs on the other X201s. To do that, I'll just go back into the web interface and shut down my node one server so I can get it moved onto the T420. And now I can click migrate and we'll move this thing onto node three. Started migration. It's finished successfully. This one only took four seconds. It moved the entire thing in four seconds. And that is three copies of Windows, each going to be running a Minecraft server on one ThinkPad T420 from 
what, 2013? This thing's honestly impressive. The cluster is definitely struggling at this point. 90% memory usage and the poor T420 running three Windows installations at 99% memory usage. But they're all running. Three Windows installs plus two installations of Linux Mint on the other two X201 nodes. Here's one of them, pulled up Firefox, go to the other node here. Boom, another working installation of Linux Mint. Now I'm kind of curious, I've been shutting down the machines whenever I've migrated them. Can you do live migration? I'm going to try and send one of the Windows VMs to node two without shutting it down and just see what happens. I'm gonna migrate the Windows one installation from node three onto node two. Migrate. Does this actually work? <laughs> I had no idea you could even do this. Right now, I'm doing a live migration copying one virtual machine's memory off of the T420 onto an X201 while the machine was running. It's transferring the state of the RAM over the network, so it's not gonna run on this computer, it's gonna spin it up and run it on this computer without the operating system knowing that it even moved computers. This is so cool. Granted, this one's not gonna take seven seconds. This one's gonna take a bit longer because it does have to move the entire state of RAM over the network. Maybe I'm getting a bit greedy here. Can I do two live migrations at the same time? I'm gonna send Windows 2 from the T420 onto the other X201. Okay, that migration definitely took more than a few seconds, but they're all back online. If I refresh my Minecraft here, all three of the Minecraft servers are running and I should be able to connect to them. Yeah, no issues there. And the third server. Oh, I'm, I'm dead on this one apparently. But yeah, no issues there either. If Proxmox is doing stuff that's this cool on decade old ThinkPads that are really not good anymore, I'm kind of getting interested in what this software can actually do if I threw some more modern, actually good hardware at it. Let me know if you want to see me do more stuff like this. Either way, come back next Thursday. I'll have something else for you. Bye.